Minister, I want to ask you if you will update me on the work that your department has done in terms of increasing and supporting the use of E10 fuels and also if you are aware of any safety or incompatibility issues with other vehicles in respect of this E10 fuel. I have received some concerning information from a correspondent who works in the motor trade who actually brought it to my attention that there are safety concerns um, with, with the C10 fuel. So I'd like to ask you uh, if you've received any of that information, Gerard Market. Thanks very much, uh, Deputy. And, and the move to E10 has been signalled since 2021 within the renewable transport fuel policy. Moving to E10 petrol standard will bring an immediate climate change mitigation measure using the existing fleet. Um, Minister Ryan uh, made regulations for E10 on the 1st of April 2023, and these will be fully operational by the 1st of July. The regulations will be kept under review within the ongoing implementation of the policy. E10 petrol as standard has been rolled out across 15 European countries since 2009, as well as the US and Australia. Ireland's petrol supply will also now align with Northern Ireland and Great Britain. All vehicles can operate on E10 and it is safe to do so, is what I have been informed. In some older vehicles, sustained use may result in more frequent maintenance, but it does not mean that they cannot use E10. This has been borne out by the experience from multiple other jurisdictions. All vehicle owners and operators are required to maintain their vehicles to operating and roadworthy standards. The annual decline of petrol car cars and east increased uptake of zero emission vehicles is likely to reduce the number of affected vehicles even further over the next decade or so. And out of the circa one million petrol vehicles in Ireland, um, there is a there is a lower level um, of of uh, pre uh, 2011 vehicles. Um, so. It, when it comes to older vehicles, is circa 2.4%, of which less than 1% are vintage or classic cars. Um, the consultation with the industry indicated that the vast majority of suppliers do not have the storage or distribution systems to supply both an E5 and an E10 petrol grade at four courts. However, specialist uh, supply of E5 can still be offered in the market if sufficient demand exists. After the 1st of July, supply of E5 will not be eligible for renewable transport fuel obligation certificates. E10 petrol as standard is one of the several transport measures to achieve a 50% reduction in transport emissions by 2030 through increasing biofuel blending to E10, 10% ethanol and B20, 20% biodiesel equivalent by 2030 as set out in the Climate Action Plan with a 2025 interim target of E10 B12 equivalent supporting a projected 1.08 megaton CO2 equivalent of carbon abatement. I, I'll give more detail on that. Okay, Gurmat, good. Um, Minister, I just feel it would be very wrong to dismiss any potential safety issues associated with the C10 fuel uh, to maintenance or lack of maintenance. I think that's, that's wrong and it's the wrong approach. But I'd like uh, to ask you, uh, Minister, um, certainly if this could be looked into, if there are safety issues, I think it's very serious. And certainly the information that I have to hand suggests that the move to E10 petrol will put people's lives in danger. My correspondent who works in the motor industry tells me that they are advised to use the UK checker to see if the car is compatible with E10 fuel. For example, a 2000, uh, 2007 Lexus is advised not to run on E10 and use E5 instead. This is a car that cost over €50,000 15 years ago and now it isn't suitable for use in Ireland. To list a few others, some models of 2008 Toyota Avensis, 2008 Audi A4, 2007 Ford Mondeo, 2006 Volkswagen Golf, all have models not suitable and there are many others. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there are, uh, given this information, Minister, I'm sure you can see why we need absolute guarantees around the safety aspect of the introduction back. and use of E10 fuels. Thanks very much. As I said, it's... it's um, I'm answering this on behalf of Minister Ryan, um, but just to say that the clear um, advice that's been given um, that the sustained use uh, of E10 in older vehicles may result in more frequent maintenance um, uh, due, to, uh, due to the vulnerability of certain vehicle parts against solvent property of ethanol requiring, for example, more frequent replacement of certain parts. Um, however, uh, however, the um, it, 
the, the clear feedback is that the, it does not mean that they cannot be operated with E10 and it is safe to do so. And as I said, the European specifications have, have outlined that. And, and just to say as well, the legisla legislation does not prevent any independent or specialist fuel um, supplier from placing an E5 blend of petrol on the market um, even after the 1st of July when the regulations are, are fully operational. Um, and and, and that's, the, uh, that's the outline. So uh, to your specific question, the clear feedback um, and the clear <coughs> guidance and advice is that it is safe to use. Um, yeah. uh, uh, good to ask Kian Corla, Minister. I thank you for your response. But then around the safety issues, Minister, that I referred to, you know, it has been brought to my attention, and as I understand it, E10 petrol has a higher bioethanol rate that is corrosive. Uh, to gasket seals, metals and plastic and many other materials. If a rubber hose or seal gets damaged from using E10 fuel and that hose or seal fails and sprays high pe uh, pressure petrol around the engine bay and comes in contact with high temperatures or spark, the exhaust manifold, for example, on that car uh, will turn that car into a fireball very quickly. Um, that's very serious, Minister, and, and it's not related to maintenance. It's a very serious concern that people have. There could be a family in that car. And the whole issue of the C10 fuel will also affect people on low incomes who are struggling and have no choice but to have an older car. So I do feel that certainly the safety aspects around this must be uh, investigated properly before it's brought in. Um, safety must be an issue, not just climate change. Safety of people as well is important. Minister to conclude. Well, the, the very clear position uh, and, um, and evidence and um, guidance that's been given is that it is safe to do so, that it may require more frequent maintenance. Uh, if you want to correspond with the department um, relating to your specific concerns, um, I'll certainly ask the officials that have been uh, engaging with this and engaging uh, on, on the European, uh, with European colleagues across this to respond uh, with the uh, specific um, guidance on it. And that might be helpful to respond to people who've been in touch with you. But the, the clear guidance and policy advice is that it is safe to do so, and that it, it may require more more frequent maintenance. Um, but but that that's what that's the position that's been been outlined.